growing up of Princess Elizabeth is of interest to millions of people in every quarter of the globe. For the British Empire has only one constitutional link, its monarchy, and the character of the heir is presumptive is personally important for this reason to all who live within its boundaries. The question which you'll expect this film to answer, or try to answer, is what is the princess like? You remember, of course, many pictures of the princess. You may even remember the first shot of her as a baby. You will remember early appearances when she and Princess Margaret, as rather small girls, drove to Crathy Church during the royal family's stay in Balmoral. They attended the Highland Games at Braemar in the course of the same visit, wearing the kilt as befits members of the Royal House of Scotland and daughters of a Scottish queen. Then there were pictures taken when they attended the tattoo. Or arriving to see one of those royal tournaments at Olympia, which were the very pleasant annual preoccupation of our army, navy and air force in peacetime. At a naval review with Admiral, then Commander, Mountbatten. You will certainly remember a series of great royal occasions in the middle 30s the wedding of the Duke of Kent and Princess Marina in 1934. King George V's Jubilee in 1935. The Duke of Gloucester's marriage. In all these processions, and in the groups on the balconies, the public caught charming glimpses of the young princess who was third in line of succession to the throne. Finally came the magnificent pageantry of the coronation. The two princesses, sitting with Queen Mary in the royal gallery, watched their father and mother crowned king and queen. You probably remember the pictures of them in their coronation robes, and among all the interest focused on the royal family, wondered what she was like, this young princess who now stood first in succession. At this time, she was a girl guide, while Princess Margaret was a brownie. But presently, there came some more intimate pictures of the royal family, it was a windy day at Buckingham Palace when the cameras were set up in the gardens a few weeks before the King and Queen set out on their journey to Canada and America. When the breeze blew the King's hair over his forehead as he studied the map, Princess Elizabeth reacted to her own ideas of how he should look before the cameras. When the King and Queen came back from Canada, the princesses joined them on the Empress of Britain before the big ship docked. It was just before the war, and the British public, anxious about the international situation, gave their majesties a great welcome home, which ended at Buckingham Palace with the royal family on the balcony. Princesses, happy in their family reunion, waved their greetings to the vast crowd below. Now well, such are the pictures which remain in our memory from the years before the war. War came and transformed the outlook for all of us, not least for Princess Elizabeth, beginning to think of the duties which would devolve on her in days to come. Early in the war, 
a picture was taken at Windsor of the royal family sitting in the garden. Princess Elizabeth trying to help her sister, incidentally dropping a stitch. Recently, new pictures have been taken on the eve of the princess's 18th birthday. Pictures of the two princesses riding, unsaddling their ponies, and feeding the foals on the king's estate in the country. The birthday was spent quietly. It was bound to be an event of worldwide interest, since royalty comes of age at 18, but war didn't permit any public celebrations, even had the king and queen desired them. Princess Elizabeth spent some time at her desk answering letters. Yes? with the royal family at the king's house in the country. At this birthday, the family atmosphere prevailed, but there was one small ceremony when the princess attended the changing of the guard in the courtyard of the castle. She was there presented with a miniature standard of the battalion of the Grenadier Guards of which she is colonel. This personal standard will always be mounted whenever the princess visits the regiment. While the princess is colonel of the Grenadier Guards, she is also a boatswain in the Sea Rangers. So when her troop of Sea Rangers meet, although the officer and mate greet her with a curtsy, she thereafter is treated as an ordinary ranger and mixes with the other girls on an equal footing. On other occasions, she may undertake the ceremonial functions of royalty, but her parents want her to qualify for her high office by training in subordinate positions too. When the boat's crew fall in, she answers to her orders and plays her part like any other girl. Watch is proved, ready for inspection. Thank you. But there's nothing very remarkable in that, unless you'd expect it otherwise. The king and queen have been anxious that their daughters should grow up natural and understanding people as they are themselves. The British Commonwealth of Nations has every reason to feel confident that in the days to come, the result of the princess's training will bring her as near to the hearts of her people as her parents are today. <laughs>